So myself, so my name is Greg, and I've been in the SEO space since 2011. Um, before we get into all the big stuff, just outside of SEO, uh, you can normally find me biking around the city of Boston, checking out sports games, really excited, baseball starting, uh, but I'm a big Yankees fan, so, you know, be nice. Uh, and then this is my girlfriend and our one-year-old dog, uh, his name is Miko, so that's a little bit about myself. But that's actually why I'm not here. Obviously, I'm here to talk about SEO and how it can improve your WordPress website. So the reason why I think SEO is so critical and so important is that it actually helps my business grow. So this graph here on the right-hand side, this is Google Analytics. And this is my year-over-year -year traffic. So I had 185% more traffic from Google. And that resulted in a 350% increase in leads. Leads for my business are people who reach out to me looking for me to do SEO on their website. And the most important thing for me is that it grew my revenue by 200%. Um, and I'm on pace again for a really good year for 2019. So SEO continues to grow upon itself. That's why it's so critical to get this correct. By the way, does anyone know Silicon Valley at all? Has anyone watched the show? Okay, we got a couple of people. There's a lot of pictures, so I want to make sure some people get this reference. So, the first thing that you guys need to do to be successful with SEO is to use Google Search Console. It's a free tool. And what's great about this tool is that it's going to tell you how Google sees your website. So chances are, if you want to get more traffic to your website, you got to be on Google. Um, this tool itself is going to show you the keywords that your website ranks for. It's going to show you any crawl errors that Google might experience when they come to your website and a boatload of other um, really valuable insight as well. Oh, and by the way, I think someone took a picture. If you need to reference this, you can go on SlideShare and you can search SEO and WordPress tips. I put it up there so you guys can go back, check out any of the slides, do whatever you want, download the presentation, you can do all that stuff. So anyway, uh, yeah, so the other search engine, which a lot of people might forget about, is uh, Bing. Now, I used to work at Microsoft Bing, so it's you know something that I champion a lot, but I know a lot of people don't. Uh, but Bing actually makes up about 30% of my traffic, which really will surprise a lot of people. Um, people always overlook this. Um, but in my mind, as an SEO, uh, everyone else ignores the search engine, so I take advantage of it. Uh, and that's why I drive 30% of my traffic uh, from Bing. Again, Bing Webmaster Tools, it's free. Uh, just like Google, it's gonna show you the keywords you rank for. And Bing also powers Yahoo, so it's actually a bigger search engine than you might think. Now, what's really critical to have SEO success is to understand your robot's text file. This is actually the first place Google and Bing will always visit whenever they come to your website. Now, you can go on any website you want, tripadvisor.com, cnn.com, etc. You can type in slash robots txt. Every site will have it. And the big thing about this robots text file is that it tells Google and Bing where they should and should not look when they come to your website. So by saying allow, you, you, you can tell their bot to come to uh, specific sections on your website. By saying disallow, you say don't look here. And what's great, is that in Google Search Console, you can test any URL on your webpage to make sure that Google can get to it. Some people who reach out to me say, hey Greg, I'm not getting any traffic to my services uh, page on my website. I'll go right into this tool and test to make sure Google can get there. And there's actually been some hiccups where a developer actually blocked the entire page from being seen. So this is a really quick fix. You can go into Google Search Console, and you can make sure that, can Google even get to this page? And if they can't, you have to update that within the robots text file. Um, so always use this tool and just make sure that if you're not getting any traffic, test your pages, just make sure Google can get to them. If you wanna run another test as well, use Google and use Bing, use these commands right over here and put in the URL that you're curious to see if it's even in their index. So again, if you're not getting any traffic to your website, put it into Google, put it into Bing, and see if it shows up. I showed this example right here. 
and I said, does Google and Bing have any pages on my site about my blog slash category slash photography and they don't? And that's actually by design. So for this example, this actually worked out very well. But if I was blocking my main services on my site, that would be a problem. An XML sitemap is kind of like your guide or your map for search bots. So the robots text file is the first place Google and Bing are always going to look at to see where they should and should not look. But you also want to include at the very bottom a direct link to your XML sitemap because you want Google and Bing to find all your critical pages on your website. So very important if you do have your robots text file, which everyone does, just include this at the very bottom. Now I'm not going to get too much into this specific, but if anyone here has um, either used Screaming Frog before in the past or is very into search engine optimization, you can crawl your entire XML sitemap just to see if there's any errors uh, within the file. For example, Microsoft Bing has been on record saying that if you have more than 1% dirt in your sitemap, they're going to ignore it. And really what dirt means is that if you have broken pages, you have pages that redirect many times to other pages on your website, um, you want to have clean pages uh, within your XML sitemap. So again, Google and Bing both look for this, but if you have a lot of errors within your sitemap, Bing's going to overlook it. Um, Jump me back into Google Search Console real quick. You can always submit your sitemap file directly into the tool, and it's gonna tell you if it was a success or if it was not. So if you see that green on the very bottom, it's telling me that Google can see all 26 pages on my website, so I know that I'm in good standing. And if you use Bing Webmaster Tools, it's the same thing. It's gonna give you a success if there's no problems. If there are problems, they're gonna list exactly what the issues are. So it's going to be really important for you to kind of use both tools and just make sure Google and Bing can understand all of your content. Now, this is actually, I think, a really important tip. So anytime you update any page on your website, whether it's your homepage, a blog, um, one of your main services, you should get in the habit of using Google uh, Search Console and Bing Webmaster Tools and fetch that page. Sometimes people come up to me and they say, um, I made some updates on my website and there's no difference in traffic. Um, and probably the reason is because Google hasn't even seen it. So get in the habit of anytime you update the page, go into both these tools and fetch it. Because when you fetch it, you're telling Google Bot to now go and check out my changes. If you guys spent days or weeks or months working on content to build, to attract a new audience, don't wait weeks for Google to get there. Tell them to go there right now. Now, does anyone here use Yoast for their website? Okay, cool, actually a lot, nice. Um, they're actually working with Google and Bing right now to do this automatically, so that's actually gonna save a lot of time. So if you guys do use Yoast, or if you're thinking about using Yoast, this is gonna be a really nice feature that anytime you update any page on your site, it's gonna automatically trigger Google and Bing to fetch those pages. It's not exactly ready yet, so you have to be in the habit right now of fetching those pages, but very soon, it's gonna do that for you. All right, so now, knowing that this is a WordPress meetup, uh, I wanna talk about some plugins that I use that help improve my SEO strategy. So again, I'm not, I'm not a developer. Um, I really struggle with code. I struggle with um, really pretty much a lot of things actually on my website besides SEO. And if I need to make any code change, whether it's adding Google Analytics to my site or any tracking, I use the header and footer uh, plugin that allows me just to simply paste the code, whether it's in the head or the, or the footer section of my website. I think this is a great plugin and it can save a lot of development time as well. So I've been in the past emailing different developers, trying to get on their schedule to update some Google Analytics code on my site. But now that I have this plugin, I can just bypass that. I think it's actually a really nice uh, plugin for WordPress users. The second thing is a 301 redirect. Um, not gonna get into that too much right now, but anyone here who's familiar with you need to redirect a page to somewhere else in your site, you can use the 301 redirect um, list and you can put in where you want your existing page to go somewhere else. Again, this can be very easy. Otherwise, if you use your 
HT access file and go deep into the code. So again, this plugin makes it very easy. And again, with, um, with Yoast, you can simply write in your title tags, your meta name descriptions. These are those ranking factors that Google's gonna always look into. So again, big shout out to Yoast. If you use that, it's gonna make it really more SEO friendly. So that might be something to consider uh, if you're not using that right now. And uh, one thing that I also noticed for websites is images. So if you have a lot of images on your website, chances are they're probably too big. So you can use this, uh, this shrink images plugin that will actually smoosh uh, the images down to a smaller uh, aspect ratio, which is actually gonna help improve your load time. So if you have a lot of pages and a lot of images on your site, you can use this plugin. It's gonna smoosh um, a lot of images down and it's gonna save you a lot of time and also improve your load time for your website. Now, I think what's, or what gets me most excited is sharing some secret tips to help improve your visibility for your website. So this is a client that I have, and right now they're ranking first for their target keyword. Uh, when they came to me, they were in the bottom of page one of Google, and they gave me a pretty ambitious timeline. They said, you need to get this to rank number one in two months, or they're not gonna pay. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'll take that, you know, that, that challenge right there. And you can see that it basically took about two months or so to get them from the bottom of page one of Google down to the top. And really what that did was increase their traffic by over a thousand percent. And that's why now they're uh, a happy paying customer now every single month. Uh, and this is actually really important for them because they don't have to rely now as much as they did on paid search. I'm in SEM Rush. This is a uh, SEO tool that I use which by the way, I have a free 14 day link. If anyone wants it, you can see me afterwards, you can run it for your own website. But what really stands out to me the most is that if they were paying Google AdWords to be seen for this keyword, it would cost them about $12 per click. And you can imagine how much that would actually add up if this keyword searched 2000 times per month. So the value of SEO right here is that they're getting, they're getting traffic each and every day and they're not paying for any of these clicks. So that's really what the value of it, of getting this right uh, within SEO. Now, you guys can go to SlideShare and you can look at this slide and learn more about what I did. But I want to kind of give you a visual that there's a lot of elements that go into SEO. So I just shared it right here. You guys can take a picture or you can go into SlideShare and get an idea. So if you're ever thinking of what I can do for my website to help improve it, Here's a pretty good uh, blueprint right here. So I'll let you guys take a photo if you want. Here's also another timeline of all of the optimizations that I did to get that client into position one of Google. So I do for all my clients is that I will mark down exactly when the optimization took place. And it's really easy for me then to plot it down onto a graph and say that we got this keyword from the bottom of page one out to the top by doing all of these other elements as well. And you'll see actually at the very top, my client was in the same position where they didn't have Google Search Console and they didn't have Bing Webmaster Tools. They also had some 301 redirect issues on their site. Um, they also did not have an XML sitemap. So everything that I mentioned earlier about XML sitemaps, about Google Search Console, Bing Webmaster Tools, um, I shared this because this is actually what I use and I got them to the top. Actually, they're, they're showing also in Bing, but I'm only sharing Google right now, but these optimizations that you do will ultimately drive success uh, to your website. This is my bonus tip right here. SEM Rush has this section that allows you to paste in your content and it gives you a score. So, for example, my client, I redacted all their content and uh, their keyword, but let's say hypothetically, I wanna rank for the term SEO service. I'm gonna paste in all of my content into this tool and it's gonna give me recommendations of words I should also consider using. So words might be like Google, Yahoo, Bing, cost savings, uh, pay-per-click, all these type of words because Google's so smart now that they're not so interested in if you just use the word SEO a lot on your page. 
they want to understand that you cover this topic in such a broad sense that they feel so confident to rank your content above others. So this is a great tool. You can use this for any page you want on your website. It's going to give you a score. And as you type into it, if you wanted to make some updates, it's going to change in real time. So you should shoot for a higher, um, higher average. And basically getting to that perfect number at the top is what's going to help you rank uh, much higher within Google. Another way to look at your site is to use a visual Venn diagram of the keywords that you rank for against your competitors. So what's really neat here is that uh, when my client came up to me, they were confident that they were uh, winning the war when it came to Google and their visibility against their main competitor. But when I showed them this view, it really opened up everyone's eyes that there's so many words out there that we weren't even thinking of. Um, so it really changed our SEO strategy to include words that our competitor had that was driving hundreds if not thousands of clicks uh, per month. So it's just a great way, again, to kind of expand upon uh, your strategy by using, again, SEM Rush. Uh, it's going to give you a lot of good information. Now, I'm not done. I think there's some really good extra SEO tips that I think you guys are going to have a good time looking at. So keywords everywhere. This is free. Um, you might be thinking, why does he care so much about this tool? Well, when you go into Google, you type in any word you want, it's going to show you direct search volume and the cost per click for any of these words. What's great is that when you hit enter, it's going to then show you on the right hand side related keywords and their search volume as well. So if you're thinking of ways to expand upon your keyword research, just go to Google. It's a free plugin. Again, it's going to show you the monthly search volume for these keywords. You can even export the list as well. So you can imagine, for me, if let's say I had a women's ankle boots page, um, I can see all the other ways to potentially optimize my content for more words, whether they're saying best ankle boots to wear with skinny jeans. I might not even thought about that, but 480 people sure did. So that's a good way for me to kind of optimize my content further with more words that might not have ever been on my radar. So again, keywords everywhere works with uh, uh, directly in Google. It works on Google Chrome and Mozilla Firefox. Second, answer the public. So this is a really cool site. You can type in any keyword that you want and you're gonna get a, a graph like this. These are words and phrases that are trending right now. So for example, this, uh, this women's boots section here, I can see all the top trending keywords that people are searching for. So if I cover that on my website, I'm going to drive traffic to my site. And what's really great to hear too is that if you have keywords everywhere um, already installed, you're going to see the search volume for all these topics. So if you export this entire list, you're going to get hundreds if not thousands of keywords with their search volume so you know exactly what to blog about or what to include on your website. So you, you basically want to work smart and put out the content that people are actually searching for to drive traffic to your website. Now, some people reach out to me and they say, I have a very low search volume topic. Maybe, I, maybe no one's searching for it. Uh, my field is very narrow. So I took on that challenge. Someone came over to me and, and they wanted to look at this term, best vitamins for hair growth, women, search 10 times a month. And they thought this was the biggest waste of their time if we optimized for this content. So what I did was I took this keyword, I put it directly into Google, and I took this very first listing right here, this top six vitamins for hair growth, and I put it back into SEM Rush. And this one page alone drives 27,000 visits each month from Google, from this one keyword that searched 10 times a month. And the reason why is because they rank for more than just one keyword. In fact, when you start adding up all of that search volume for 10 keywords, 10 keywords, etc., and you sort them by largest to smallest, uh, so like vitamins and best, um, you're gonna see exactly all the phrases that people are searching for. So when you basically optimize one page for one keyword, you're actually optimizing it for hundreds. So if it's a low search volume topic, don't dismiss it. In fact, I would optimize for it because this one site, again, 10 searches per month, 
is actually driving 27,000 visits. So it's definitely worth their time. And the thing is, when I put this back into keywords everywhere, here is every single trending question that people are searching for right now around this topic. So all of a sudden, this person who reached out to me who thought, is SEO really worth their time to optimize for? I think so. And that's about it. Thanks, guys. I don't know if we have time for Q&A, but do you guys have any questions with uh, what was gone over? Um, I see one. Yep.
So basically, how do I measure Yo's as like, is like, is like the all and be all sort of thing? Um, in my mind, it's more like a really good suggestion. So I'm never going to just use one tool and say, oh, I have to get into this one thing. It's more of like, okay, the readability, I can definitely improve. Uh, my title tag needs a little bit too long, which is probably from the um, They're really good suggestions. It's not necessarily about trying to check out every single box. Um, but when you have other elements going on during your day, it's just nice to have that one extra set of eyes that can be the interaction. It's like, maybe you should use this. How often is it? Sorry? Yeah. Uh, just a quick question. You mentioned uh, XML site map. Did you mention a plugin for that? Or? So, great question. Yoast will actually create that XML site map for you. So, uh, if you have Yoast plugin, you'll automatically have it. You can uh, search, I think it would be site map underscore XML. So, whatever your website is. Dot com slash site map underscore um, <coughs> choose right there. So if this is great, another great thing that it does. Will it do the, the robot text file too? Or? That that's I, made. That you need to do. Um, so that's why I put down some tips. It's basically just a way for you to tell Google that if you come here first every single time, check out my site map that Geos already created. Um, but if you don't have Geos, you can certainly go on any free website, uh, XML site map generators. They'll just call your entire site and create an XML site. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, you need to pull that back up. If you guys go to um, SlideShare, if you search either for um, for my name, Greg Kristen, or if you search for SEO and WordPress tips, the entire presentation is right here, and you can download it. Because I think it's a little blurry when you look at it from SlideShare, so definitely um, click on the download button. It'll be uh, a lot clearer than what it looks like right now. Um, yeah. some time I'm going to show you just real quick because I think it's a really good question if I went to my site you'll notice that I ask a lot of questions in h2 tags because there's you can have up to six header tags on a page and if I scroll all the way down here this boss and SEO expert and I uh, click on inspect right here this is my h1 this Boston SEO expert but then if I keep scrolling down a little bit, I say, what does good SEO look like? And I inspect this element right here. This is my H2. And the reason why I broke it out like this is that my primary keyword that I want to rank for is, uh, is Boston SEO expert. But then my H2 tags though, I chose to write them as an H2 tag because answer the public was telling me people were actually searching for questions like, what does good SEO look like? And I know that a header tag is a ranking signal for Google, so I decided to include that, but I didn't want Google to only consider that my page is, what does good SEO look like? My primary, which is my H1, is Boston SEO expert. So, it's a very, very good question. Is that question format, does that resonate with searches? Yeah, it's definitely because um, anyone here use voice search at all, like Alexa or Google Voice? I mean, I, I, I mean, not the time I enter anything into Google, I ask any questions about that, so that's actually very spot on. Yeah, so if you, if you use a header tag to ask the question and then you answer it right below that, that's how Siri, uh, uh, Cortana, Google, whatever it's called, the, the voice, um, 
they actually read off the header tag and then they read the answer below it. That's why if you ever search for how do I bake salmon, it's gonna read off and say, here are the nine tips to bake salmon. They're gonna say, step one, preheat the oven to 425. But it's it, people ask that question on their page and they say, how do I bake salmon? And then they list off all the answers. So um, definitely include the question as a header and then just have the answer underneath it. Yes. So when you get a uh, ranking that you want for your client, how fast does that grow, that position you grow? What do you do to maintain it? And what is competition? How does competition yeah. affect it to knock you out of that list? Yeah, this, this is, yeah, this is a great question because when you get to position one, you become the target. So, um, how do you maintain it? So a lot of it really is just doing the basics. So using tools like Google Search Console, Bing Webmaster Tools, just making sure there's no errors within your site. It sounds, it, it sounds like you're not doing as much, but that's so critical because if there's any error that might restrict Google now from looking at that page, you can instantly drop. Um, another thing that you should always keep doing is add more and more content to the page. Not necessarily to hit a number of how, much, how many words, but constantly use tools like Answer the Public and see, oh, here's a new type of question that people are asking about this subject. I should include that on my page as well because if I can get the best possible answer every single time for whatever search uh, keyword someone does in Google, Google's gonna favor my site. Because if my competitor is saying, I'm ranking position five, and here's TM Blast and I wanna outrank them, I'm gonna answer so many questions on my page, I'm gonna have videos, I'm gonna have slide share presentations, it's gonna be all accessible. Google might actually consider showing that, so I have to work just as hard to maintain my site to give Google the best possible chance to say that, you know what, I think this is really good to show. So it's never about getting a position and then sitting back. It's actually a lot of work to continue to keep optimizing your content. But, great question. Yeah, this is, this is a great question. Um, I worked on this site for a little bit. Um, I helped them out. The Knights of Columbus, they wanted to um, have people rent out their hall in a specific town and a radius around it. And what I did here was, you'll see, I use words like this. So even though we're in Massachusetts and the town is Westboro, um, it's also important to include the neighboring towns around your location. So if you say things like, oh, we're just a short distance away from, from these towns around, it kind of gives Google the understanding that here's the physical location of this place in Westboro, but they also include these neighboring towns as well. That is one way that you can certainly kind of expand your reach. Other ways you can do it too is you can include a map onto your... Um, your, your directions page or even just your page itself. So what I did from here is that I knew that Westboro is a very small town. Uh, does anyone know where Westboro is, by the way? Okay, cool. Anyway, I'm, I'm from there. Um, from New York. What? You're from New York. Well, I'm from New York, and then I lived in Okay. But um, what was great, though, is that I knew that Worcester was a much bigger town next to Westboro. So if I include, say, driving directions from Worcester or Providence, Boston, etc. I'm giving Google more and more signals of I have a really good resource. Um, so from if you're 30 minutes away or 45 minutes away, I, I, I pretty much include that on the page. So it kind of gives Google now more understanding that oh, this place that's uh, in the middle of Massachusetts is actually around these other towns as well. So definitely consider including those neighboring towns in your, your content on the page, and then even consider maybe having like a directions page as well, and just showing how easy that is just to get there if they click right on it. Especially if they're on their mobile phone, that'd be a great way too. If I found this venue, and click right on it, launches Google Maps, great signal for Google. Uh, okay, by the way, um, how are we doing with time, do I? Tomorrow, okay. Of being able to still get them enough like, bang for a 
Yeah, this is this is a big topic within the field. So these answer boxes um, can take away some click activity for sure. Because if I um, if I search for let's say um, how old is Fenway Park, and I get this answer box here, 107 years. I don't need to click on a website link to figure this out because I got the answer. So specific queries like that um, are definitely taken away. Even like weather itself, you know, you search for weather in Google, you get the answer. You don't need to go to, you know, AccuWeather because you sort of already got what you needed. Um, what I would say is this: people also ask. This is actually where the opportunity is. So if you were ranking just for the term you know, how old is Fenway Park, 107. I would really be using Answer the Public and Google to look at these other queries as well, people also ask, because these are the queries now that people are gonna probably click more into, because these are more specific. So, just how old, Google's pretty good, they're gonna show you the answer. But if I'm really curious more about, you know, this green monster or like, what's the smallest stadium, etc., I might get the answer, but I might be more curious to like learn more about that. So I'll, Google can only show like, you know, a couple of sentences on that. So you really need to expand upon uh, the keywords on your site. My, my other tip I would give is that there's a tool called Ahrefs, and I'll just put it in here if you guys want to take a picture of it. Um, what's great about this tool is that any, actually I'll, I'll do one right now. Uh, if I go to Keywords Explorer and I search for the term, uh, how old is, uh, David Ortiz. Think, how about how old is All right. Um, they give you. They say that about sixty-five hundred people search for this term alone. How old is Obama? But what's interesting is that only twelve percent of those are actually clicked because Google is showing you the answer already. So when you're thinking about writing content for your site, you can use a tool like Ahrefs and get an idea that even if I rank first for this keyword, only 12% of these searches actually result in a click. Because again, if I put in that term, you know, how old is Obama, and I get the answer right there, I don't need to click. So things to really consider. If you're gonna be building out content, you can use a tool like Ahrefs to get that idea of, you know what, if I actually rank for this term, it might not drive a lot of clicks. So you kind of have to evolve your strategy. Really good question. Uh, I think we have one more. I know you had your hand up. Yeah, you can, one, once you submit it once, uh, Google's pretty good at, at checking it out, especially if it's in your robot sex files. So when Google comes there, they're going to see the link, they're going to go to your XML site map. Um, you don't necessarily need to worry about submitting it constantly because it's, if it's in your robots.txt file, it's going to be one of the, the next pages that Google is going to look at because they go to robots.txt file first and then they go down and see where they should not look and then they see the XML site. So, um, yeah, thanks everyone. This was, uh, this was great. Thank you.